Have you ever noticed how there are some moments in life that just compel us to stop and kind of take it in? Maybe to stare and wonder, stop and ponder the significance of what's going on. Maybe even just breathe in the experience for what it is. You know, some things are just like that, aren't they? Maybe it's a full noon, noon, a full moon, let's try that. A full moon in a clear, dark sky. Maybe it's a long gaze of a newborn baby. Perhaps it's an eagle soaring in the sky. Maybe it's music that reaches deep down into our hearts and souls and takes us away just for a moment. Perhaps it's the brilliant, clear blue of ocean waters. Or maybe it's even an act, an unexpected act of human kindness. All of these and other things are potential moments of wonder and awe. And I have to tell you that I believe we are created for such moments. And the Bible is full of those kinds of moments. Moments of awe because of, because of God, because of someone finding themselves in the presence of God. And so today I want to invite you to experience one such biblical moment of awe by following along with today's sermon scripture reading uh, in your own Bible. Maybe pull a Bible out of the pew rack there in front of you or you can search for it on your phone. We're going to read today Psalm 29. Psalm 29 has 11 verses. We're going to read all of them. And I'm going to be reading today out of the New Revised Standard Version. So if you're searching for it on your phone, you might want to uh, search that version. Or we will have it on the screen in just a moment. But it's interesting, the, the editors of the New Revised Standard Version, they've titled this psalm. They give titles to the psalms. I don't know why. But they've titled this psalm, the voice of God in a great storm. And I think you'll be able to see why they've given it that title as we begin with Psalm 29, verse 1. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a, one, a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl, strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Indeed, indeed. You know, thunderstorms, they really are pretty major events. You know, dark clouds, powerful winds, torrential downpours at times, wild and predictable flashes of lightning. And then my favorite, in just the right moment, if you're in just the right place and it happens in just the right way, there is that thunder that pounds you as it hits you at times. <laughs> All of this, well, whether you whether it chases you to the nearest storm shelter or whether it inspires you to be a storm chaser, you have to admit that, that a thunderstorm is one of nature's more breathtaking events. 
And the experience of a great storm is what brought the ancient psalm writer into a moment of sheer awe in God's presence. It was a moment of awe and a connection with the Almighty God. And at the same time in that moment came the question, who, who is God? Well, God is the one whose voice thunders over the mighty waters, whose voice is powerful enough to break the cedars of Lebanon. Thank mighty redwoods. In their region in that ancient time, that's what they were talking about. One whose voice flashes of lightning and shakes the rocky mountains of the wilderness. And then the Lord sits enthroned over all of it as king forever. Who is God? The question just is permeated through the lines of this psalm as we hear it or read it. Who is God? Well, in the encounter with the storm, the psalmist knows God is greater, much greater than any human being. And I think we get that. We get that because whether it's a powerful thunderstorm or the majestic rainbow that follows, whether it's a star-packed night or the spellbinding sunrise that comes next, you know, whether it's the moment of the birth of a child or a uniquely special life that results from that birth, when that moment of awe happens, part of its impact Part of his impact is the feeling of how this is about, all of this is about so much more than us. Indeed, the awe of God is the reminder that we are in the presence of one who is what we are not. Hear that again. The awe of God is a reminder that we are in the presence of one who is what we are not. And in knowing and experiencing who God is, we can find possibilities that are so much more than our very limited ones. So what are some of these possibilities? Well, I think there is a clue for one in particular back in Psalm 29. It's in verse 3. And the psalm says in verse 3, The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. You see, to the ancient people, to this ancient psalm writer, the waters, the mighty waters, well, they were the waters of the ocean. And those waters of the ocean in that ancient mindset and time, they signified chaos. They signified uncertainty. They signified the unknown because they didn't have a clue. They just knew what happened when the ocean got angry. Now that connection may not be there for our modern ears, but to the ones who originally would have heard or read this psalm, who would have heard the words, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. You know, those words that we heard a little earlier in service would have come to their minds back in the beginning of Genesis 1. In the beginning, all of all things, the Spirit of God swept over the waters. Do you hear the connection? And the very voice and words of God, the powerful voice and words of God, they began to create light, darkness. Day, night, waters, dry land. All were created, separated, and structured by God's voice and command. God's voice and command brought all of that chaos that was before creation into order and peace brought order and peace into what was nothing but chaos before. And so when we are connected with God in moments of awe, indeed we are reminded, we are reminded that the possibility of God's order and peace is very real, even in, or I might say especially in, 
times and situations of chaos in our own lives. Maybe it's a shattered dream, or maybe it's a broken relationship, a failing career, life-threatening diagnosis. Maybe it's crumbling finances or circumstances that just seem to be going from bad to worse. Life can be chaotic. Let's just call it what it is. Life can be chaotic and even at times feel like it's falling to pieces. And I remember, um, this was a while back, a few years ago, I was with a group of friends and I asked, we were just talking and I said, well, you know, the preacher in me, I'm always asking questions that maybe I can use something later, right? Now, now, you've, now I've let you in on my secret. I'm gonna, we're going to be in conversation sometime and I'm going to ask a question and you're going, I wonder when he's going to use that. But anyway, uh, I asked the question, what is it that brings awe and wonder into your life? And, and one, there were a lot of different responses. It was a fairly big group of people. We were gathered for an event, and one person responded that they were struck with awe when all the pieces of life fall into place. And that's pretty cool, you know, isn't it? But, but then that person went on to say this. When all the pieces fall into place, and you can look back and see God's path that you were tracking on the whole time, whether you were aware of it or not. You see, the awe of God is a reminder that we are in the presence, that we walk in the presence of one who is what we are not. And that brings the possibility of order and peace even into the midst of our chaos. And you know, even the earliest disciples marveled at this same power to bring order and peace in the midst of chaos when they saw it and experienced it in Jesus, Emmanuel, God, with them. In the gospel reading that we heard earlier, we're told that Jesus in the midst of the storm got up in the boat, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace. Be still. And I love what comes next. It says, the wind ceased, and are you ready for this? There was a dead calm. Huh. Of course, the disciples are in awe, and I think maybe more fear, and say, who is this? The awe of God is a reminder that we are in the presence of one, as it was for them long ago on that day, in the presence of one who is what we are not. And that brings the possibility of life-changing order and peace into the midst of perhaps continued negative or painful circumstances in our lives, into the chaos of our lives. Indeed, the voice of the presence of God that is ultimately heard and experienced in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ can make those painful chains in life of violence, of hopelessness, addiction, grief, sin, and even the chains of death can make it a very, you know, breaking those chains be a very real possibility in our world. And so what I want you to do today is I want you to claim the power of God's voice. I want you to claim the power of God's voice, especially in the places in your life of chaos and where you see impossibility. You know, if we were to go around the room today we're in public, we might not want to admit it, but my guess is somewhere in our lives, now or in the not recent past, we found ourselves at a place that seemed impossible. And so what I want you to do is I want you to claim the power of God's voice in places of chaos and impossibility in your life. I want you to, I want you to be open to God's power and the possibilities of peace and calm and strength that it can bring. And here's something that I hope will help you do that this week. Um, 
This is on the screen now. This is verse 11 of Psalm 29. You heard a little earlier. It's how the psalm ends. And I don't think that was just an accident because I think the psalm writer knows the the powerful voice of God wasn't just something, kind of an abstract idea to write about, to think about, or to sing about, as we often do even today in worship. Rather, it was a down-to-earth reality that was available to God's people then and God's people now. And so Psalm 29 ends with this mm, prayer, if you will. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. If you have a worship bulletin uh, in the worship order section of it, under the message, this is printed there. Uh, If you don't, I want to invite you to write this down or take a picture of it with your phone. I want you to have this this week in some way, shape, or form. I want you to have it so that you can repeat it in your heart, in your mind, maybe out loud. Put it somewhere where you can see it every day. And let it come to mind maybe as your day begins. Or perhaps in the middle of the day when you hit one of those moments of chaos or impossibility, or maybe at the end of the day, as you end and look back over the day, use this prayer to remind yourself of the power of God's voice. In fact, I want you to begin to do that now. Let's say this verse, this prayer out loud together. We'll do that on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. You know, it's hard for us to try to get back in the mindset of the ancient people. But what I will tell you is more than likely the sound of a close lightning strike. And you know what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about, you know, oh, yeah, the storm's over there and you can kind of see it. And then like 10 seconds later, you hear a distant thunder. No, no. The power, the sound of a close lightning strike and then the almost immediate deafening roll of thunder that followed, that was probably one of the loudest noises known in that ancient time. And so it's no wonder that people would have equated it with the voice of God. Now, in that less scientifically sophisticated time, it may have helped them to make sense of things, to think of it that way, to make sense of a seemingly inexplicable phenomenon. Today, we know it's not so much a matter of of wondering how that happens, that lightning strike, or why. And so what I want to say to you is that a better question today is where? Where do we experience moments of awe? Moments of awe that connect us with the one who is what we are not. Where do we hear God's voice? Louder perhaps than thunder? Or as quiet as a whisper? Inviting us to trust in God's power and strength rather than our own? Where... Do we see God's possibilities in our lives and in our world? Possibilities of peace, order, calm, and strength. I want you to keep asking that question of where. Think about it for a moment, and then we'll pray. Let's pray. Holy God, God, you are our creator, our savior, our sustainer and provider. Indeed, you are God. You are the God of power, peace, and possibilities. And so we praise you and we worship you right now 
in our hearts and our minds. And God, in your presence, we also have to admit, I have to admit that with everything going on in our lives, we sometimes overlook or even run over those moments of awe that you created us so uniquely to experience. And in so doing, when that happens, we fail to hear your voice. And so we ask that you forgive us, forgive me. And God, we want you to know that we, we do want to hear you. We, we do want to know your voice and hear it and listen to it. We want to experience all the possibilities of your goodness in our lives. And so starting right now, as we open up our spiritual eyes and ears and hearts to all that you are, we ask that you let us hear your voice. Amen. Amen.